working with Nipsey Hussle. You won a Grammy for Hire with DJ Khaled. Yeah. So what was it? What was it like working? So let me ask you a question. Your artist, when you go into a studio, um, and whomever it is, it doesn't have to be anybody in particular. So what? What's John Legend's goal when he goes into the uh, studio with an artist? I I just want to make the record amazing. So I want to make it something that I'm proud of that will. Uh, make history. I want my legacy to be my records. Right. And um, so every time I go in there, I'm going in with that goal of making something special, right. life changing, uh, legacy building. Um, and with Khaled, people always ask me, what does Khaled actually do? Does he do this? That? But part of what he does that's so important is he brings all these different artists together. He has a great ear and he is able to bring the right beat with the right artist, with the right rapper, with the right singer, put it all together and make a record. And that's not a simple thing to do because if everybody could do it, they would be doing it. Correct. But he's doing it. Right. So um, he is great at connecting people, bringing things together, hearing a beat and be like, I can hear Nipsey on this one. I can hear Hove on this one. I can hear uh, Drake on this one. Bringing those people together, having the relationships with them and bringing them together to make the record happen, that's not an easy thing to do. Right. And that's what Khaled does. And so he's brought me in on a bunch of records. And it's funny, he won his first Grammy with that record. Wow. So this record we made together, Higher, with Nipsey, we won the Grammy after Nipsey passed. And uh, what's wild about it for me and Khaled is the first song we did together was a song called Grammy Family. And we made a song called Grammy Family before, long before he ever had a Grammy. Right. And then many years later, I helped him win his first Grammy. So that was pretty cool. Who hasn't John Legend worked with <laughs> that he would like to work with? This is, honestly, I get this question. I'm like, I'm trying to find names. Like, I, I've said Beyonce before, which is true. I'd love to work with her. Um, Adele. What about Adele? Adele, I've said that too. That's funny you said that. Uh, so I've said both of those names. And then a lot of people I would like to work with, I have worked with. Right. So, um, you know, I've been fortunate, man. I've worked with legends like Stevie Wonder, Quincy Jones, Tony Bennett, um, Al Green, and then a lot of my peers in R&B and hip hop, uh, pop. K-pop, like all over the place. I've worked with a lot of different people and I love it. I love collaborating. When you... Talk about Stevie. Yeah. Legend. Yeah. Quincy Jones. Yeah. Legend. Are you nervous? You know, the first time I met Stevie, I was a little nervous. It was... Because he's a prodigy like you. Oh, yes. And, you know, I, like, if there's any artists that are the biggest influences in my life and the music that I make, Stevie, Marvin, those are like two of them. And um, so... I knew his catalog backwards and forwards. Like, uh, like he meant so much to my life. And the first time we meet, we're re about to rehearse together for the BET Awards in 2005. So ordinary people, like I said, my first big signature song that that really was a genuine hit. And uh, I was about to get honored at the BET Awards. And uh, Stephen Hill, the guy who used to produce this, uh, the uh, the uh, BET Awards. He said, um, I want you and Stevie to do a mashup of Ordinary People and My Sharia Moore. And uh, people may not know, but uh, the take it slow, oh, 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 that part of the song has the same chord structure as la, 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 from My Sharia Moore. Right. And so Stephen heard that and knew it and was like, y'all should do it together. And so my first time meeting Stevie was singing My Sharia Moore as a mashup with Ordinary People at the BET Awards. So we rehearsed it and I was nervous in rehearsal, but you know, here I am with Stevie Wonder and I'm just trying to make sure we do it right and everything like that. But I was definitely like, yo, pinch me. I'm like right. in a room with somebody I've been looking up to my whole life. What about when you met Quincy Jones? When I met Quincy, well, this is a wild story. Uh, I've never told this story. Now. <laughs> The first time I spoke to Quincy, I was getting reprimanded. Wow. So, <laughs> what'd you do? I didn't do it. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> Uh-oh. This going to be good. Let me go. <laughs> Let's take a drink first. <laughs> so, after Ordinary People Blows Up, Oprah is planning a thing called the Legends Ball, uh, where she was gonna honor all the black women that meant a lot to her. So she had like Aretha, Rosa Parks, 
Diane Carroll, uh, Cicely Tyson, mm -hmm. I think Toni Morrison, like all these, yes. like just like the who's who of the black. legends. But exactly, she called it the Legends Ball, and she was planning this Legends Ball, and she, I got a call from my agent, and they were like. Uh, Oprah Winfrey wants to call you. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> I was excited. So Oprah calls me up. John, I'm planning this thing called the Legends Ball. And uh, by the way, I, in my show, I always say, I'm glad I changed my name to John Legend because I, otherwise I wouldn't have been invited to the Legends Ball. <laughs> uh, but she calls me up, asked me to play at this event for like the luncheon during the day. And uh, I believe we had the same agency at the time. Mm hmm and um, she was like, I'll talk to your agents and work it all out. And um, apparently my agency was like, decided they were going to ask for everything from Oprah and and like make it like it wasn't an honor and a privilege right. for me to, to be at this event. And, you know, she was still doing her talk show at the time. And, and if you appeared on her talk show it could change your life. Correct. And uh, so they were trying to like do all this negotiation and and play hardball with Oprah for me to come and sing at this event when I would have done it for free. Right. I would have uh, been I, happy. I would have paid my own way to go. <laughs> exactly. I would have paid my own way to go, all of that. So it comes back to my team that Oprah was a little put off by the way my agency was playing hardball with her and somehow, Quincy got wind of this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think she called Quincy on she, you, man. Well, she's friends with Quincy, and I'm friends with her now. I'm friends with Oprah now, so we all good. But at the time, she's like, Who, man, what's going on? And Quincy calls me up like, man, you need to talk to your people because whatever they're doing representing you, like... It's not a good representation. It's not a good representation. It's not a good look. You're messing up your relationship with somebody who is, you know, obviously could Can be help. very helpful in your career. And why? Like, because you're trying to get a little extra money and not think about the big picture. Mm -hmm. And I was so embarrassed, man. The first time I talked to Quincy Jones is him reprimanding me because my agent was trying to play hardball right. with Oprah. And so. But he's being an agent. Yeah, he's being an agent, but like when people are representing you, they're representing you. Correct. And and that's why you got to be careful about who you let, let represent, represent you. you. Correct. And so, you know, I learned that lesson. And also, like, I knew, like, it was an honor to play this event. And uh, if he was representing me, really, he would have known that I would have been honored to play this event. And he didn't need to play hardball in, in this situation. <laughs> there are times when you should play hardball. And there's other times when the opportunity is enough where you don't need to get paid cash for it or, or you don't need something in return. The opportunity is enough. Right. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because, you know, we like to do something before to something.